He threw away our wedding rings after I playfully mocked him at a pre-party with our best friends. Hello, Reddit. My name is Emily and I'm 28 years old. I'm a chef and I'm in need of your advice desperately. You see, I have a fiancé, Simon, whom I'm supposed to be marrying in four days, but I haven't heard anything from him, not even a text. I've tried several times to reach out to him, but he has blocked every means of me doing so. My fiancé had been upset, and he threw our wedding rings away after I playfully mocked him at a pre-party with our best friends and I haven't seen or heard from him since then. He had literally ended things with me at our pre-party. We had decided to have a pre-party because we didn't want to have separate bachelors or bachelorette parties, especially because I didn't trust things that went on those nights. So instead of having separate parties with our friends, we decided to have a pre-party, where we could have it combined. But I decided to have it a week before our wedding because I didn't want to be a drunk bride or be nursing headaches on my wedding day. I had wanted everything to go perfectly. Well, not so perfect now that my groom is missing a few days before our wedding. I'm so scared. I cannot not have a wedding. I love Simon too much to lose him. I really need some advice on how to get him back. Simon had gotten really upset because our friends and I were mocking him, but it had only been playfully. Everyone had even laughed at the jokes I made about him, and they also made jokes of their own. But Simon had been so angry about the whole thing. He just went inside our room picked up our wedding rings, and threw them out the window. I had been so shocked when he also said he was done with the whole thing, that there was no wedding happening, and he even mentioned a shocking reason why he wouldn't marry me anymore in front of all our friends who now all probably think of me as a snake, and that I really ought to be abandoned at the altar. You see, the thing that happened that got Simon upset hadn't been only because of the mocking. Simon had found out about my dirty secret and past, and now he wants nothing to do with me anymore hadn't been my fault. I know I had done something very preposterous, but I just thought it would never come out, and that Simon would never find out about it. Now he has, and I am so confused, upset, and scared of losing everything I've always dreamed of and worked towards because of this. I had met Simon, my fiancé, when he came to eat at my restaurant. It had been during the lunch break hour that I usually give my workers, and they had all gone to do their own thing. I had just sat around reading through a recipe book I had just gotten the day before when he walked in and requested food. I had wanted to tell him that it was our lunch break, but I kept quiet about it and decided to make him something to eat instead because he looked so tired and hungry, and he looked devastatingly handsome. I didn't want to turn him away. It was after he had finished eating and was paying that my staff walked in, and he realized that he had imposed on my lunch break. He apologized profusely and offered to make it up to me. And when I refused, he insisted and invited me to have lunch with him to make up for it. He suggested my restaurant as the venue, which made me laugh because before he suggested my restaurant, I had started to feel insulted that he would invite me to lunch outside when I had a restaurant of my own. The next day, he showed up as promised, and we had lunch together. Our conversation had been very nice, and I found myself talking about things I usually wouldn't, especially with strangers. When the lunch break ended, he collected my number and promised to call. I remember so well that I found myself waiting excitedly for his call that evening, but he didn't call. He also didn't show up the next day, and I found myself thinking about him. I even almost burned myself in the kitchen that day because of my distracting thoughts. He called two days after, though, and we spoke for a long time. He apologized for not calling the day before as promised. That was the beginning of our friendship. We were friends for one month before we started dating. We knew all of each other's friends, and we even started hanging out together, especially on weekends when I did not open up my shop. Simon is an executive director at his father's company, which is currently being overseen by his brother Peter. Somehow, he and his brother work in the same company and still have the best relationship as brothers. Neither wants to exert authority over the other or fight for ownership rights. I found it weird at first when I discovered that the company's CEO was actually Simon's younger brother. When I asked why he wasn't the one heading the company, he told me he was never really interested in the family business. He only worked there because his father kept insisting, and working as a director rather than the CEO meant he could quit whenever he felt like it. I wasn't satisfied with the conclusion he made about it. I had always felt that if you had to do something, whether it be a matter of interest or not, why not just go for the best regardless? But Simon was so content with his position, 
I knew no words of mine would change his mind. I tried though several times in fact, but Simon could be quite adamant when he chooses to be. I had always been quite stubborn myself. I mean I left home at the age of 17 because I hadn't wanted to attend college at all, and I haven't been back since, not even to see my parents. My parents loved me so much, especially because I was their only child, and they always thought they knew what was best for me. They wanted me to go to a college of their choosing and study to become a doctor, but I refused. They later agreed to a compromise among themselves and told me I could go to a college of my choosing and pick any course I wanted. But when I told them I didn't want to go to college at all, but instead a cooking school so I could become a certified chef, my parents flipped. They maintained the stand that becoming a chef, especially one who stands out, would be difficult, and it wasn't exactly a lucrative job, but I disagreed. When I realized that my parents weren't going to change their minds about college, I ran away from home. Barely an adult and already on the street with literally no money except the ones I took from my parents was challenging. I had to sleep on the streets and keep moving because I had no choice. I barely traveled before I left home, and when I did travel it was always with my parents so I knew nowhere. I sold almost everything I had with me just to be able to feed, and luckily for me, I met a friend who took me home to her parents. When they asked about my parents, I lied that they were dead and that my uncle wanted me to start working as a maid for a rich man so I had run away from home. Princess's parents took me in and I was grateful for it. I stayed with them and then got a part-time job so I could save up money. Princess had a brother, David. He had been my first boyfriend. Because we stayed together, it had been easy to indulge in sexual activities without anyone knowing or suspecting us. He had been my first. He taught me all there was to know about sex. I was obviously not his first. But luckily enough, I had saved enough money to rent a room. The room was damp and leaked at very annoying places when it rained, and it was extremely cold at night, especially because I had no bedding, but I had no choice at the time. I got another part-time job as a waitress in a club, and the outfits we were given were quite short and seductive. I was only 20 at the time, but I had the sexy body of a 26-year-old. I'm not proud of admitting this, but I did sleep with different men for money. I didn't enjoy the sexual part, but I did enjoy the financial aspect. It's crazy how much money men are willing to give just to get down with you. I charged plenty for sex and I got it. Once I had enough to get by, I got a better apartment and I also paid for my cooking class. But I continued sleeping with men even though I already had enough to open up my shop after I got certified. I guess I got greedy for the easy money. I got my certificate and funnily, I still did not stop sleeping with men, especially older ones, until I met a very rich, crazy guy. Greg and I met at the club I frequented so I could get men interested in me. He had not been that much older, but he was really rich and had asked that I become his mistress exclusively, and I agreed greedily. Greg spoiled me silly with money, and within two weeks of knowing him, I had bought myself a house and also a shop for my cooking. But the problem was Greg was very possessive and also aggressive. Whenever he went through my phone and saw my messages, even if they were older messages from other guys, he would get so angry and beat me up until I was bloody, and then he would have forceful sex with me. It was like he enjoyed my mumbled cries, like it turned him on. He would apologize for his actions after the whole thing with a lot of gifts. He would give me lots of money and buy me gifts to make up for his actions, and I continued enduring his abuse because of the luxurious lifestyle I got to have in return. We were together three months before I eventually had to run away when Greg almost killed me because a guy just winked at me when he took me with him to the club. He dragged me home that day, beat me up so much, and then had forceful sex as usual, but this time he still didn't stop at that. He continued to beat me up and have sex again throughout the night. I fainted twice during the whole thing, and when it was morning and he left on a work emergency, I managed to drag myself out and catch a cab to the hospital. After I was treated, I hid from Greg for two whole weeks. He kept calling, and at first he was pleading, but later he started threatening me, but I was done at that point. I wanted nothing to do with him, and luckily for me, he did not know about the house I purchased. Since it was in a kind of rural area, he wouldn't think to look for me there. After two months passed successfully, Greg stopped the threatening messages, and I was finally free to go out. I started with my restaurant, I bought the necessary equipment I needed, and I employed staff. Business was slow at first, but eventually I got the boost I needed. 
Even though my restaurant was a big hit in that locality, I couldn't afford to expand further because I was scared Greg would find me, so I stuck with what I was doing. On weekends, I never go to the restaurant. I made those my rest days. Although my staff did, they opened up and attended to customers on weekends. I never told Simon about Greg in my past. I wanted it to stay as my dirty, hidden past and never to surface again, and I maintained the same story about my parents being dead with him too. I feared that if he knew about my parents, he'd realize the rest of my past too, and I didn't want that. I wanted him to continue seeing me as the perfect and amazing person he thought me as, and not the shady person I actually was. Simon and I dated for two years before he proposed to me, and during the duration of those two years, he was just the sweetest boyfriend ever. He took care of my needs regardless of the fact that I could do that on my own. He made sure I was happy, and he always spoiled me with gifts. On weekends when we weren't with our friends, we went on dates, and the dates were always so much fun. I usually looked forward to them. Simon wanted me to expand my restaurant, but I refused and lied to him that it was just because I was content with what I had going on. He was not convinced, but I was pretty adamant about it, so he gave up on it. Our first argument had been at this fundraising event he invited me to. Every year, his father's company held this fundraising event for orphanages across the country, and many wealthy people were always invited to donate. Most people did that not because they cared about the orphanages, but because they wanted to be seen as good people who cared. But either way, they still gave, and that helped a lot of orphans across the country. Simon invited me as his plus one, and I rejected the offer, not because I hadn't wanted to go, but because I was scared I would see Greg there since he was also among the wealthy people. Simon had been really upset when I kept giving silly excuses for why I couldn't go, and he told me he would have to go with his personal assistant, whom I loathed. The lady made no effort to hide her interest in Simon, and it usually pissed me off. I told Simon a whole lot of times that I didn't want her around, but apparently his father had employed her, and he couldn't just dismiss her for no reason because she was pretty good at her job. I accused him of wanting to cheat on me, and we fought about it. I eventually decided to go to the event because I didn't want that lady anywhere around Simon at an event like that and be mistaken as his woman and not his staff. Simon and I went to the event, but I was so nervous and kept looking around to check if Greg was there, so I could get a heads up and avoid him. Eventually, halfway through the event, I saw no one like him, and I relaxed slightly. Simon thought my being anxious was because I saw a lot of people I usually only had seen on TV or social media. Simon tried to make me relax and introduce me to a few people, but then he had to leave me to attend to an important business partner of theirs. So I sat alone, sipping my champagne slowly so I didn't get drunk, when a man sat beside me and clinked his glass with mine. I was surprised, and when I looked closely, he looked so much like Simon. Before that, I had only ever heard of Simon's brother. I had never met him because he was mostly at the headquarters of their company, which was situated in another country. So when he introduced himself, I connected the dots and realized who he was. I tried to behave politely with him, but he kept flirting with me outrageously. I knew he probably didn't know I was with his brother, and when I opened my mouth to tell him just that, Simon reappeared and playfully asked his brother to back off from his woman. Peter, realizing who I was, still didn't stop flirting with me. I knew he desired me strongly from past experiences with men like that, but Simon didn't seem to know that because he thought his brother was just playing around. I was happy I didn't have to meet him again after the party, so I smiled through it all, but I was so wrong because Peter showed up at my restaurant the week after. He flirted more with me, and I told him clearly that I was with his brother and wouldn't entertain his flirting, but Peter didn't stop his attempts. He would send me flowers every morning to my restaurant and even to my house with notes attached, sometimes saying how beautiful he thought I was or how much he desired me. Other times he sent me gifts like a beautiful dress, shoes, or jewelry. I didn't tell Simon about it because I hadn't wanted to cause a fight between him and his brother, knowing how much he adored his little brother. I continued accepting his gestures, and eventually when he invited me out on a lunch date, I agreed with the intention of telling him to stop with the gifts. But the lunch date turned out to be so much fun that I agreed to another one, and that was dinner. Peter had a way with words, and he flirted easily, making me feel beautiful. Simon never ceased telling me how beautiful he thought I was, and I've always had compliments like that, but somehow the way Peter just says it draws me in. 
I started spending more time with Peter than I did with Simon. I'd make excuses of busy days just to go on dates with Peter. I hadn't wanted to tell Simon about meeting up with his brother because it would seem odd no matter how much he'd want us to get along. Hanging out as often as we did would definitely arouse his suspicion. Eventually Peter got his wish. I slept with him. It had been a drunken mistake the first time. He called me that evening saying he was feeling very down and wanted a friend around. Specifically me. He asked if he could come over to my place. I couldn't say no to him when he sounded like that so I agreed. And he came carrying drinks. We drank and talked. And before long I was really tipsy. And everything else happened in a blur. The next thing I became conscious of was the fact that I was on the bed. And Peter was beside me. Naked. I begged him to keep it a secret and insisted it couldn't happen again because I was with his brother, and he agreed at first. In fact, he stayed away for a week, but he eventually came back, wanting us to just have casual sex with nothing attached since I wasn't yet married to his brother. I agreed to it. I know, I know. I did a stupid thing, but I really don't know why I accepted the offer. I loved Simon very much, and I knew quite well that I was not in love with Peter, but somehow I just kept finding myself in bed with Peter. I even stopped having sex with Simon because of that. I guess I thought that would somehow ease my guilt. On my 28th birthday, Simon proposed to me. I had planned not to have a big party. I just wanted something simple, like staying indoors all day and eating the cake I baked. But Simon kept insisting we go out for dinner, so I reluctantly agreed. He prepared everything. I just had to show up for the dinner. When I got there and we had our order taken on the plate instead of food, was the million-dollar question, will you marry me? I was so happy and almost cried. I love Simon, and spending the rest of my life with him would be my biggest dream come true. We planned to have our wedding in two months, so we had enough time to make everything perfect. It had been my suggestion, actually. Simon was happy to follow through with anything, as long as the whole thing ended with me being his wife. Peter had not been too happy when he heard about Simon's proposal, though, but I did not mind. We were only messing around, to me, and who I married was not his concern. Well, that was until I heard Peter started to object to our relationship. He wanted to create doubt in Simon's mind so that he wouldn't marry me. I had been so upset, and I had threatened to end things between us if he didn't stop trying to ruin my relationship with his brother. And he agreed not to mention anything like that to his brother again. Trouble came when I finally met Greg again. Apparently, he was a friend of Peter's and he had seen Peter and me together, and Peter had told him about his brother and me and also his involvement with me. Perhaps to brag about the fact that he could have any woman he wanted to his friend, but he did not know he was digging me a trap. How I knew all this? Well, Greg came to see me, and he threatened me with the information he knew about Peter and me. I eventually ended up sleeping with him again just to cover up my secret. It was hard having to juggle two guys I was having sex with and my real relationship together, but I couldn't risk Simon finding out about them both, and the only way to keep them quiet had been having sex with them both. Simon started to suspect my involvement with Peter when he stumbled on my earrings, one he bought for me in Peter's house. When he asked about the earrings, I lied that it was not mine. Simon had not said anything else, and I thought he had forgotten about it until the day we planned to go out for lunch with his parents and he asked me to wear that exact pair of earrings he bought for me. I had to come up with an excuse that I had another pair in mind to use. Whether or not he believed me, I don't know. My guess is he doubted me, but Simon hated confrontation, so he just kept quiet about it. And he was quiet all through lunch with his parents, which was unusual. Even his parents noticed. Some days after that, Simon started insisting on dates for Peter. He would go as far as setting up blind dates for him, and he didn't even have to lift a finger because their mom did all the work. He had only told her that since he was getting married, Peter should also have someone he's dating seriously as well. Peter, who wanted nothing but casual sex, was frustrated with his brother's deliberate actions to get him a woman. At that point, I knew Peter must have wondered if his brother knew just how much casual sex he was involved in. Simon and I started to plan for our wedding. Well, it was mostly me doing all the planning. Simon just went along with everything I said. He had been behaving weirdly towards me ever since the earrings incident, and I had been scared to ask what the matter was because I feared I wouldn't like the response. Greg finally traveled out of the state, and I was happy because that meant he would leave me be. 
Peter and I, although, continued our affair. I told him that we would stop messing around once I was married. And he agreed to it, saying he didn't even like messing around with married women. So I planned our pre-party, sent out invitations to our friends. My friends mainly consisted of the people I had cooking class with, and we kept in contact ever since. I did everything I felt was necessary for things to go smoothly. A day before our party, Simon asked me a weird question. He asked what my take on cheating was, especially between couples that had been together for a while, and I said what everyone would normally say just to avoid suspicion. I told him that I would not accept any excuse for cheating and that I probably would never forgive him, and Simon nodded and agreed with what I said. When I asked why he asked, he told me he knew someone who did such, and the partner had asked for his advice on what to do. I relaxed slightly, thinking it was not me Simon suspected. Our pre-party came, and I was even excited. Not minding Simon's strange change in mood, I was having fun. I even participated in the games my friends played. I was asked at one point to dance seductively with Simon. Simon just stood there watching me do my thing. Having worked in a club for some time, a friend I made who was a stripper had taught me to dance, so it was quite easy for me to dance with Simon. Simon still had not smiled or anything, just watched me. I decided in my head that I was going to ask him what the matter was after the party. And I continued partying hard. Soon my friends and I started teasing and talking about sex as a married couple. The guys joined in the conversation and we began to laugh about our silly marriage jokes. Then one of my friends jokingly asked a question. She asked what I would do if Simon was not able to satisfy me when we finally married. And then I found someone who could. It had been a joke. We were all just playing around. In fact, everyone laughed at the question except Simon. He remained quiet and the warning bells in my head should have rung at that moment, but stupid me went along with the joke and I told him that I was sure Simon would do fine, but if he didn't, I would probably find an assistant for him. I meant it as a joke. The guys laughed, knowing it was, but clearly Simon did not see it that way, and he just got up, went inside our room, and came back out with our wedding rings that we had purchased together the week after he proposed, and he flung them out the window. I was so shocked, and he turned to face me, telling me in front of our friends that he was done with the whole relationship. He told me that he thought he could go along with everything and not mind all the lies I told because he felt if we did get married, I'd change because that was how much he stupidly loved me, but with the jokes I had been making, he realized he couldn't bear marrying a woman who felt it normal to cheat on him with his brother and his friend. I was so shocked and could not utter a single word then. Simon knew. He knew everything about what I thought was a secret. Apparently, he had come across a woman who looked very much like me on one of his work visits and he had curiously carried out a private investigation on me, and that was before the earring incident. He had found out everything, including the lies I told about my parents and the ones about how I got money for my business and the fact that I was cheating on him with his brother and his brother's friend Greg, who also happened to be my ex. He looked at me with disgust in his eyes, then shook his head and walked out. I did not mind that my friends and his friends had heard everything and that they were whispering. All that rang through my head was the fact that Simon just broke up with me a week before our wedding and that I was losing the only man I loved. It felt surreal, and I couldn't believe it. It's been a whole three days with no word from Simon. He blocked off every means of reaching out to him, too. I'm so scared, guys. Cannot lose Simon. Not now, not ever. Please, guys. I really need your advice on what to do. How do I get Simon to forgive me and continue with our wedding plans? I am desperate, please. Update. Hello, Reddit. It really is upsetting what you guys think of me and how much of it you're willing to let me know. To say I've been depressed is an understatement to how I feel when I got to see what you guys think of me. It's obvious you guys hate me, and while it's not exactly surprising, but I could bet you guys do not feel as much hate for myself as I do. Your painful and hurtful comments actually made me sit back and think of just how stupid I've been. I thought I could eat my cake and have it. I thought I could get away with cheating on Simon and get away with it. I thought I could still get married to him after all the lies and hurtful things I did to him. My wedding day has already passed and yet I am still unmarried. I wore my wedding dress, went to church, and waited a whole day for my groom who never showed up. I did the same thing the next day and the day after until I was forced out of the church. My life really is ruined. I destroyed the one good thing about my ugly life. I should have never hidden anything from Simon. 
I should have told him exactly what happened with him. I should have told him about his brother's persistent wooing and about Greg's threats. Perhaps I would not be in this mess I am. I would have probably gotten married to him now and been wearing my wedding ring. I found them where Simon threw them after searching for a day. The ring is my perfect size. It was a beauty that I fell in love with at first sight, but now even the ring isn't fitted on me anymore. Perhaps I have lost weight. I wouldn't know. I've broken all the mirrors in my house so I didn't have to look at myself because of how much disgust I felt toward myself. I feel so heartbroken and I beat myself up mentally every day regretting everything I did. I am so alone. With no one. Absolutely no one on my side. I wish so desperately that I had not hurt Simon as much as I did. I have no idea what Simon did to Peter after the whole thing but I guess no matter how much they'd fight about it they would end up maybe reconciling again. But I'm willing to bet with my life that my parents would probably want nothing to do with me. They probably already think I'm dead. I left home on my own accord and had to hit the streets sleep with different men for money. I feel so dirty. Scrubbing my skin until it turns so red doesn't even cut it at all. It doesn't wash away the disgust I feel for myself. After all the crazy things I did in my past, I still found someone who loved me unconditionally. He had still been willing to get married to me after finding out about my past and yet I still managed to even destroy that one good thing about my life. These past few weeks of self-reflection on my actions have been torturous. I've cried so much I feel like my tear glands have become faulty. They just keep leaking without being forced to. They are doing so right now too. My life feels so empty. I haven't even opened up my restaurant in weeks. I've probably lost all my customers to another place, but I don't even care about it. I just literally lost everything good about my life in less than 10 minutes and now my whole life has crumbled. I wish so desperately that I could rewrite my wrongs. I wish I had not. I wish for so many things, but they probably won't happen, right? I'm forever stuck in this hellhole I created for myself. It hurts so badly. I wonder if hell is more suitable than living this life right now. I guess my life on earth is worse than hell. Update. Hello Reddit, it's me again. This is possibly my very last post here. Just wanted to say thank you. Even if I had no support from you guys at all. Even though all I got were insults. They still were at least something. At least I got that instead of the silence that just seems like a constant in my life now. My life is not improving. Still the same hellhole as it was before. I still have no Simon in my life so I guess nothing else is worth anything. I still beat myself up mentally for everything I did. I still hate myself. Whoever said pain healed with time definitely did not know about my own situation because it keeps getting worse by the moment. It's like my chest keeps constricting painfully each day. It hurts really badly every day I have to wake up and face the harsh reality of having no Simon. Even my dreams are haunted by the sweet memories of him and what could have been but never would be. It's really painful because I know I did all of this to myself. I know I will never find peace within myself and I will forever carry this burden of guilt around for the rest of my life. I'm even willing to live with the guilt and pain for the rest of my life if it would ease just even a fraction of the hurt I caused Simon. I know he will eventually move on and get married to another woman who isn't me, obviously. That thought alone just messes up my mind and gives me painful panic attacks. This hell. This hell I created for myself. Is there really any saving from it?